A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Welcome back to another video. Today is improvised session day and the Twitter boy sent this to my cursed math memes Twitter page in a DM and he asked me if I could solve it and I said yes and I thought I could do this in an improvised session just because I see logarithm of 1 minus x and if I see logarithm of 1 minus x it's already a done deal for me to be honest. So we are going to dive right in. I already have a few things in mind that I want to do with this integral here and I hope you are going to enjoy this video. Link to the improvised sessions will be down there in the description. Now we are going to dive right in. So when I see a logarithm of 1 plus or minus x I always think about Taylor series. This right here looks like an absolute fancy number theoretical um, integral. So um, just for you as a little reminder the natural log of 1 minus x can be expressed as a Taylor series expansion namely the one from negative uh, from, from 1 to infinity so negative infinity boy from 1 to infinity so k being greater or equal to 1 of x to the kth power over k. So that's a well-known Taylor series expansion log means natural log and yeah we are going to make use of this thing. I mean, why the hell not? I'm always doing this. This is just an analytic number theory integral. And I could bet my arse on it that it yields something with Seda. If I see something like this, this is bound to have something with Seda in there just because of the one over K here. So yeah, um, if we were to plug this in, we are going to get, I'm going to put it here. The integral from zero to one of the negative sign can be dragged to the front of the logarithm of x, natural log of x, um, times the infinity boy, k being greater or equal to 1, of x to the k power over k integrated with respect to x. And now as always we are going to interchange our two integrals, the infinite summation and our main integral right here. Um, the only problem point being our 1 that we are having up here. But you can basically let some number up here, epsilon, go to 1 and then you can basically show by using the uniform convergence property of this logarithm right here that you can interchange those and by letting the limit go to 1 up here that the interchange is actually justified. So this is something that you can do more rigorously. We are just going to bring it to the outside, also the factor of 1 over k. So this right here is negative the infinity boy k being greater or equal to 1, 1 over k and then we have integral from 0 to 1 of the logarithm of x times x to the kth power integrated with respect to x. Alright and yeah now it's up to us to evaluate this integral. Uh, should be kind of easy. I think we can, yes once again just like with the last one um, I have put here on this channel, put out here on this channel, we can just um, trace it back to the gamma function I suppose should work out. So um, let logarithm of x be equal to t for example but then this would go to negative infinity so we are going to use the trick where we put negative sign here meaning overall that x is nothing but so multiplying both sides by negative one side equal to zero and then raising both sides to the base e we are going to get e to the negative t this also means that dx is nothing but negative e to the negative t dt now our upper and lower bounds, so this goes to infinity because logarithm of zero goes to negative infinity, negative and negative becomes positive and at one it just goes to zero, leaving us overall with negative the infinity boy k being greater or equal to one of one over k. Um, integral from infinity to zero. Also we can track the negative sign into here. This gives us change of upper and lower bounds from zero to infinity. Let's just do this real quick. Then logarithm of x is negative t. Okay. Then x to the kth power is going to be e to the negative k times t. Oh, ooh. Um, everything's right, but if we have negative k here and then negative one, we are going to get e to the negative t times k plus 1. This infinite series is going to look pretty ugly. Um, 
I suppose we need to use partial fractions. Never mind, um, we are going to see this in a second. Um, maybe you can already see it too. Um, if you have done enough integrals, you already have some kind of gaze for ugly infinite series that are going to pop out on the other side. Um, okay, so we had x to the k power, this has been covered, and then we have negative e to the negative t dt. Okay, negative and negative is going to cancel out. We can bring those two together as being e to the negative k plus 1 times t, leaving us overall with infinity boy of 1 over k, integral from 0 to infinity of um, t times e to the negative k plus 1 times t integrate with respect to t. And yes, this is where we need to introduce another substitution to trace everything back to the gamma function. So we let this exponential term up here, so this argument, um, k plus 1 times t be equal to, I don't know, eta as always. Then we are going to get that d eta over k plus 1 is nothing but dt. We can plug this into here. k is strictly um, positive all the time, meaning our upper and lower bounds are not going to change respectively. Meaning overall, we are going to get the infinity boy, k being greater or equal to 1 of 1 over k, then integral from 0 to infinity. t overall becomes eta over k plus 1. So this is eta over k plus 1 and then e to the negative eta, this is what we were seeking, and then the eta over k plus 1. And this is why I said it's going to become kind of ugly, because now we have a multiplication in the denominator, so we need to think about how we are going to deal with this. Okay, overall we are going to get... Uh, that, that's a really ugly summation. I agree with you there, my boy out there. So um, 1 over okay, k plus 1 squared is independent of eta, we can bring it to the outside. Um, and then we are going to get an integral from 0 to infinity of eta e to the negative eta d eta. Obviously you can use integration by parts here, but this is nothing but um, the gamma function of 2, which is yielding 1 factorial, which is nothing but 1. Meaning overall our integral that we are having here is just going to be uh, this one. This infinite series and this is where the fun begins. I hope I can figure this one out. I mean partial fractions should do the trick, but I sense a few problems here. So um, thing is, um, we are having a harmonic series in here. So if we were to, uh, let's start easy on this one. If we were to break this up into some kind of A over K, plus or minus, I don't know, b over k plus 1 squared. Then we are going to have the problem that we are going to sum up from 1 to infinity of, let's say, 1 over k right here. This is going to give us a harmonic series which is going to diverge, meaning this approach doesn't work out. So we can do this. Even though this right here would converge, this would be some maybe it would converge, I don't know, but maybe this part would be some kind of Hurwitz zeta function of 2 and 1, this is what we have here, kind of. Um, it would probably converge. Um, we have a problem with the first part. So next approach we could do, there, there are only so many possible um, combinations you could do for, part, for partial fractions. The other thing that we could do would be um, a over, let's say, k times k plus 1. Um, let's say plus minus, and then we're going to have plus, plus minus, let's say b up here, we're going to figure a and b out, um, k plus 1 squared. This is like the other possibility that you could have, be, because this right here in a partial fraction decomposition could yield a telescoping series, this is one of the things that could work out, um, this is kind of a famous one, it would yield like um, 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 1 and there would be a telescoping series. We are going to see how that approach works out. Um, we need to expand this with k plus 1 in some way. So we would need, let's say, plus or minus k plus 1. We are going to see how that turns out. Plus or minus, we would need to expand this by k over k. So such that we can get k times k plus 1 squared, I hope you can see where this came from, so say expanding this one here by uh, k plus 1 over k plus 1 and this by k over k. Um, to get ourselves a 1 up there in the numerator, we would need to get rid of the k. So we're getting a negative sign here and a positive sign here. 
leaving us overall with the decomposition. Uh, um, okay, so we are going to get positive k plus 1 over k times k plus 1. That is the same situation that we had before because we had those as a I'm not certain about that negative k over k plus 1 squared. Ah, I think this one right here is going to diverge. I'm pretty certain that this infinite series would diverge from 1 to infinity. Mm, I think that was a divergent series. I think that doesn't work out either. Um, okay, I think that doesn't work out. Let us go for the last combination I could possibly think of. Uh, namely, we are going to break this up into some kind of um, let's say a over k plus, okay, let's say plus or minus, then plus or minus b over k plus 1 and plus plus or minus c over k plus 1 squared. Um, this is another possibili uh, possibility that comes to my mind. I think there aren't too many possibilities you could play around with, but let's see if we can figure something of this out. So we would need to bring everything to the same numerator right here. So let us go about this step by step. We are going to expand this by k plus 1 squared over k plus 1 squared. So giving us plus or minus k plus 1 squared over k. So overall our common denominator is going to be k times k plus 1 squared. Okay. Then our b. Okay, we need to expand this by k times k plus 1. So plus or minus k times k plus 1. And we need to expand this by k over k, so plus or minus k. I hope you can see where all of this comes from. Um, it's just partial fractions. And I don't want to do this as an outtake because it's an improvised session. This is part of the game, all right? Okay, um, overall, I'm going to write everything out. We are going to get plus or minus. So down here, we are going to get k times k plus 1 squared. k plus or minus k squared plus or minus 2k plus or minus... Um, 1 plus or minus k squared k um, plus or minus k plus or minus k. Let us see how... Okay, um, we can go about this tactically because we need a 1 up here. Okay, meaning we need to get ourselves a positive sign on the 1, meaning overall we are going to get a positive sign overall on those, meaning we are going to get a positive sign here. Okay, then we would have our 1. So we need to get rid of the 2k, meaning we're going to get k and k. We need negative signs here, and this basically settles the deal because this negative sign is attached to this part. Getting negative, negative k squared. Yes, this does work out. So meaning overall, what we have here is um, we are going to get a positive sign here. So 1 over k, then we are going to get a negative sign here, negative 1 over k plus 1, and a negative sign here. Okay, this is what I call a pro gamer move, um, just going through all the combinations and hoping that you can get something nice out on the other side. And this works out, this is convergent. Um, do you see, this is the telescoping series I was talking about before. Um, let us write everything out. So we are going to get infinite series, where k is greater or equal to 1. We are going to get 1 over k, minus 1 over k plus 1. I hope you can see that this is a telescoping series, that's a famous one. This is most probably the, the one that you are going to get in some kind of anal 1 homework, definitely. I had this in my anal 1 homework at some point. And then negative infinity boy, k being greater or equal to 1 of 1 over k plus 1 squared. So uh, I immediately recognize this as being 1 minus the Hurwitz theta function of 2 comma 1. Okay, so um, you can write everything out. Let's put it like this. This right here is 1 over 2 squared. Just from all the playing around with the theta functions, I immediately recognize this. So 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared, blah, blah, blah. This is nearly theta of 2. Okay, this is approximately theta of 2. But the thing is, what's missing is a factor of 1 here, so we need to add a 1 and we need to subtract it. So this is what we need to do to get ourselves um, eta of, uh, theta of 2 kind of, but with a negative 1 attached to it. So meaning, we have a negative 1, so this is going to give us 1 minus theta of 2. Okay, this is just this part right here, just write everything out, just falls from the tree like a ripe apple. Okay. <laughs> 
to answer and then we are going to get so so this summation right here is going to give us we are going to have 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 okay this is this part plus 1 half minus 1 third and so on up until infinity meaning overall this is going to cancel out this blah 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 up until infinity telescoping series leaving us with 1 meaning overall we are going to get 2 minus theta of 2 which is nothing but 2 minus pi squared over 6 Okay, and thus we are done. I think this should be the answer and I do hope it is. Um, yeah, there was kind of some work. I mean, that one right here was extremely easy, but, but infinite series are kind of harder to evaluate most of the time than integrals, believe me or not. <laughs> it is what it is, even though infinite series are just integral. Right. Never mind, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and recommend channel if like. Don't forget to buy those t-shirts I created or support channel on Patreon. And subscribe to Flammable Maps too, if possible. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao!